officially in five, four, three, two, one. Ahoy Malloy! Welcome to the Saw X review live stream. I'm Decipher and I'm gonna just tell you, I just got finished seeing Saw X and I have thoughts. I just saw Saw and I just wanna tell y'all how I felt about this film. Okay, so let's get to typing. We got our handy dandy notepad. I've been watching some Blues Coos with the little one, so just bear with me on that. So this is the Saw. Oh, and if you haven't watched one of these before, this is the unedited raw review. So I'm just gonna talk to you guys open and honestly. It's gonna be very raw, non-scripted, and you know, just put myself out there. The edited versions of those reviews hopefully will come later, but right now my editor has been pretty busy because he has a birthday that he's planning. And if you don't know, because you don't watch enough of these videos, my editor is myself, and I'm planning my kid's birthday party. So I've been busy, and then I also I'm backed up on videos too. So I'm just like, hey, can I get some live streams out for you guys? So that's that's the story. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it, as my mama would tell me. All right, so this is their Saw X, and I'm gonna be typing and spelling words wrong. I do. Uh, not apologize for that because I'm just using notepad and notepad does not have autocorrect so bear with me you're just mostly just listening listening to the soothing sounds of my voice now let's start saw X review it's really saw 10 review and if you've watched one of these before then you know there's a special thanks category special thanks so anybody that goes into the chat and just says anything I don't care if you say like hi or this sucks spelled that wrong too my keys are just very clickety clackety i just like touching them too so whatever you type in there i'm gonna add you in the special thanks category it's like hey thanks for just dropping in and saying hi so let me just put any body who enters chat some words will be capitalized for no reason but you know that's fine and for a late night stream we got some people on we got uh you can't even see on the video because it's the white notepad but we got five people oh no one person just left four people on youtube and one person on twitch that's perfectly fine now up top before we even get into the review i like to do this fun game where we try to guess the budget and guess the box office i usually already have those pre-pulled up but this time i don't i was working on the, um another video had some good things in the works. It's really tomorrow. I give you guys a little spoiler. I reached out to this dev. They sent me a, a code to check out their game, and I'm in the middle of doing their review. So I'm just just backed up and having fun. But let's look up the Saw X budget. And before I even pull it up, I'm going to just guess and say anywhere from 50 million because that's a good price point to 70 million just in case but these are not to sound offensive a bunch of no names like there's nobody high on the oh i gotta pay this actor a lot besides tobin bell and he probably didn't ask for that much to come back so 50 million is what i'm gonna say ding this can't be accurate hold up hold up let me let me read this it says 13 million with the production budget reported at 13 million saw x looks sure to be a profitable film regardless of what happens next i gotta get another source i gotta get another source damn that is wikipedia even says it too and imdb what all right this is a record folks this is a record and first of all that shows because i was gonna not come at these actors but these are some no-name actors I never heard of. So yeah, 13 million. This is the lowest film that I've seen a budget for. So the budget is 13 million. I put it in the chat in case anybody's reading chat. Oh, you can't double click? Oh, I thought I could like do this little click, clicky thingy. Yeah, a budget of 13 million. I've this is my lowest film that I've seen a budget come in that lower. That's crazy. I mean, that's so smart. And again, these are the live streams, so I'm going to go off on a bunch of tangents. You guys are rocking out with me for the tangents. If I was to ever direct a film, it would, well, first of all, I'm more into superhero films, but I know the budgets on those are crazy, but it would definitely be like something low budget. I would, you know, not want to do horror because I can't stand horror. Ask me why I re reviewed a horror movie then. Anywho, but I would do something where it's low budget. I'm, I'm bringing on a bunch of no-name cheap actors. Like, you ain't never heard of these people. The only place you've seen them from is like a high school play. I'm bringing them on. 
giving him like five thousand bucks. I'm gonna do an Ice Cube on Friday. So if you don't ever you ever heard of that movie, Friday's a movie with Ice Cube, Chris Tucker, um, Debo. It's not his name. And they did a movie, and he paid him like maybe five thousand to be in that movie. That's what I'm doing. I'm getting this movie made cheap. So this movie's gonna make his money back regardless. Now let's see what its current box office is looking like. All right, so let's pull that up. I want current box office numbers. Let's see. Landscape had a successful opening weekend, earning 18 million domestically, 11 million internationally. The film's worldwide gross. I bet the film's worldwide gross can't even get that word out okay so here's the worldwide gross if you didn't already add it while i was added up while i was talking all right so it's at 29.3 million so it's already made its budget back so it has to make 26 million so where we get that number from is it cost 13 million to make and they probably spent about 13 million to market this film so as long as it makes 26 million it's at least made its money back and now we're at 29 million and that's pretty good so it at least made its money back not a lot of millions but it's still profitable enough if they want to do a sequel they know hey look we got to pay these guys a couple hundred thousand no millions and we're going to get them done all right so let me pull up my list i have my thoughts, thoughts on the film. I'm just checking. Okay, yeah, chat. Nobody's in the chat. That's fine. And let me put the current box office in chat real fast. Just in case somebody's reading chat. I don't think anybody is. Nobody's reading chat. All right. So, where is that screen? All right, here we go. So, this was, um, no, no, I was just reading my questions that I asked myself before I write the review. All right, so let's talk about performances. So we have Tobin Bell. He played John Kramer. As you know, he died in, was it Saw 3? Saw 3 or 4, who cares at this point? I, I literally watched the recap just to remember because the Saw timeline is convoluted. So this is a prequel. Um, so I didn't come in thinking, oh, I wonder what's going to happen to him. I was just curious and I was open-minded about the whole thing. I was just... Hey, what's, whatever happens, happens. I just want to see what happens. And I think he did good. This one, it came off as like how Equalizer 3 did, where it was focusing a lot on John Kramer, which is fine. The first act of the film, and I would say the first two acts, really, the first act and the half. So somewhere around the halfway mark of act two, that's when they flipped the switch and they said, okay, let's get back to the traps and the killing. But that beginning part of the movie was a lot of setup, even though that's more like pacing that has nothing to do with the performances. But... Tobin Bell is John Kramer did a good job. Then you have Salty. Oh man, almost dropped my coffee. Whoo, that scared me. Shawnee Smith. I said Salty. And this is the artist. Anyway, you have Shawnee Smith as Amanda. Um, she was fine. I never really cared for the Amanda character, and I'm not a fan of it. The villain of this, though, or one of the victims of this, again, another no name that I've never heard of, and I can't even pronounce the name. They got a. I wish I could pull it up on screen. It's Sinove. McCody, uh, McCody Lund, man, I can't even say that name, but it got an O with a, a line through it, really cool name, she was good in it though, she brought the goods, and then there's a special cameo that I will not talk about, I mean, just saying that there's a special cameo, is like, ooh, who's the special cameo, but uh, yeah, special cameo, and again, my reviews, I try not to do no spoilers, so, I, I feel like even saying that is a spoiler, because then you watching the movie, waiting for the special cameo, so I will say there may or may not be a special cameo, allegedly, so maybe you have something forward to look forward to, or maybe you don't, but that's as far as I got, as far as performances, how everybody did, the no names were just, no, no, they were just no names, again, not saying that I could be a better actor, but you know, your boy out here acting, I'm an actor, I'm uh, building in one thing, don't look it up, don't look for it either, all right, plot of the movie, here's the plot, Hero gets played, Hero wants to play a game. Bam, there you go. That's the plot in a nutshell. I thought the plot was fine. It, it was serviceable for what was going on. I liked it. I had no complaints about it. Um, were there any particular scenes that stood out to me as like either really good or really bad? Mm, there was a scene where somebody has to make a sacrifice, a fleshly sacrifice, and I thought it was just nasty. I was like, ugh, 
Ugh, I don't like this. I don't like this. This movie was making me squirm more than Spiral did. I like Spiral better, but a lot of people didn't because Spiral was, I guess, say less of a Saw movie and more of an investigative detective movie. Like I'm gonna just say SVU because my wife's favorite show, but that's. I like salt. I mean, I like Spiral better because of that. With this, this movie was gross. This took me back to the torture porn. And I'm like, oh, I hate this. I hate this. And it, let me tell you something. One reason why I saw this movie, because I really wanted to see tonight um, A Haunting in Venice. Because I like that. Give me that Hercule Poirot. But my producer was like, hey, you got to go for what movie's going to be hot right now. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go see Saw X. But so uncomfortable. Um, back to the pacing. So, like I said, the first act, I was going to say at first it was boring, but no, nah, really, it was setting up for the second and third acts, and it paid off so well that I actually enjoyed it. So, I was okay with the pacing of the film. Perfectly fine with it. It was, it was almost teetering to the point where it's getting a little boring, but once we got into the second act and the third act, I was like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's go. All right, how did I feel about the movie's uh, sound, like the soundtrack and the score? Let me tell you something. If you've seen Saw, if you see Saw, Saw Saw scene, then you already know it's iconic. There's dun 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 I'm probably doing a horrible rendition of it, but listen, y'all already know it's good. Obviously. It's nothing really I can say. That's that's good. Um were there any like themes, deeper messages in this movie? I would say probably just don't be a dick. That's about it. Other than that, nothing that you could really read into. This was just, you know, your popcorn horror flick. Barely even popcorn, because if you eat anything. Yo, there was one scene. Again, it's in the trailer, and I'm not looking at my trailer play, because I'm sitting there looking over my notes. Not this, no, not this scene right here where they, oh yeah, that scene right there. That scene right there on the screen, where the guy looking at, oh, this scene right here. This scene, you see him? You see what he doing? You see what he doing? This scene right here, I was ready. Mm. If I had a weaker stomach, I would have threw up. And I was ready. I was ready to let it go. I was like, yo, I know the people that work at the movie theater. Shout out to Eric and shout out to Tom. But um, I was ready to go. Eric, I'm sorry. I was ready to throw up right on the ground. I don't care because that scene was gross. I was like, ugh. And I had to keep telling myself, it's not real. It's not real. It's just a movie. But I'm like, this shit is nasty. So that's how I felt. Um, let me see. How I feel about let me see, themes. Okay, how I feel about the movie's ending. The ending was fine. We had a nice third act twist, and I think it left the door open that if this movie performs well enough, we'll be able to get a sequel. The continuity is so it's not that it's been destroyed or anything like that. It's just confusing. I would have to like do a deep dive on Reddit or on YouTube to say, oh, what's the best order to watch all of these Saw movies? Because honestly, I really only saw Saw one and two. I really only saw. I really only watched Saw 1 and 2, maybe 3, but like, I don't even know how we got up to 10. Are they counting Spyro? Spyro. <laughs> Spyro the Dragon. Are they counting Spyro? Are they counting Jigsaw? I didn't see Jigsaw, by the way. It was just, I don't know what's going on with the thing. That's why I said this movie was enjoyable enough. I wonder what a hardcore fan would think of this movie. Oh, shoot. I forgot to put all this stuff that I was just now saying um into here i mean you guys are listening to me talk so what what does it matter the next question i'll put in there and let you know all right so it says would i recommend this movie here's my answer i'd say uh no because this movie was nasty but if this is your you know type of horror that you like it's called uh torture porn then definitely go for it i remember as a kid watching the first saw and the second one and i was like oh this is gross and i, I don't like this and then another movie came out called hostile and hostile was even worse there was a scene in hostile where you had to take out your eyeball i was like oh what the no this is nasty this is nasty no 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 i i hate this movie what are my overall thoughts and feelings about this movie? Here goes my answer to my overall thoughts and feelings. Uh, it was a good film, but it was hard to watch for my punk A. I uh, cursed in my own notes, but I don't, I don't want to put that on there. I'm trying to keep everything all above board and stay monetized. How did the film make me feel emotionally? Did it provoke any strong feelings or emotions? Can you guys guess? Before I tell you what strong emotion I felt while watching this film, just guess. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it was disgust. 
just disgust. Just, ugh, gross. Ah, nasty. I was like, ugh. I kept on. I was so happy. All right, so usually when I'm watching a movie, I turn my phone brightness all the way down. And then I got a Samsung, so it has an option for extra dim. Very nice in a movie theater setting. Because other than that, it's pointless. But only in a movie theater. So Samsung always has those, like, useless one-off features. So I use that. And then I'm using um, Google Docs because it auto-corrects. Well, sometimes, because this particular time, it was doing not a great job. So... Every cha- Usually, I'm just staring at the screen and I'm having a hard time stopping looking to write down my notes. This time was so easy for me to look away. I was happy. I was happy to not look at the screen. And I haven't had a film do that to me since mm, Evil Dead 2011. Not Evil Dead Rise, but that reboot they had in 2011. The only time where I was like, okay, I got to physically look away from the screen because it's so disgusting. The scene in Evil Dead, I'm saying 2011 with a lot of confidence, but it could have been 2013. It was probably 2011. So, you know, you guys will know that are real movie buffs. The Evil Dead reboot that they had came out with with the girl. Um, damn, I feel like they also did another one. That's, I'm getting off on the tangent. So it was a scene where I think the black girl went to the mirror. She looked at herself in the mirror and then I guess the demon possessed her. Whatever happened, she takes a knife, she breaks the glass in the mirror and she puts it up to her cheek. Now, mind you, I just said 2011, so we're talking 10 years ago. So whatever age I am now, minus 10 years, whew, I couldn't handle it. I was like, oh, I gotta leave. I gotta leave. I can't see this. So I barely remember how that movie ends. Spoiler, I believe it ends with her getting a chainsaw hand because I think I went and watched it later or at the same time. But, um... Again, sorry for the spoilers. Sorry for the just out of nowhere spoilers, too. The movie's 10 years old. You had your chance to go see it. And if you didn't, you don't even know what I'm talking about. So I ain't even say the name of it. What? Well, I did, but don't worry about it. Uh, Yeah, so that's how I felt about the movie. Oh, all right. Here's the next one. Let me make sure I get this highlighted. Go down. All right, so some of the main things, like, okay, what stood out to me in the movie, such as, like, audio visual stuff so like whether that's camera angles like if you watch my evil dead review i think i talked about how they use like dutch angles and stuff this movie has some really interesting color grading that i hate but it's very early 2000s so i was um noticing when he went to ooh, again no detail i'm not giving you no details in the movie i know the trailer's playing that's giving me details but when he went to somewhere it was blue like the color grading so they had a blue filter and then when he went somewhere else it was yellow that didn't stand out to me that was just like ew why y'all doing this from like 2003 2009 and the only reason it stands out in my head is because i'm doing a rewatch of house by the way comment below if you guys want me to talk about tv shows because i have been watching some tv i've watched the end game crapopolis a lot more and i know someone commented that they want to hear me talk about um what is that app they made me download and that i haven't been posted on it is called s oh sim kill s-i-m-k-l list i gotta get on that i still haven't figured out how that works sim kill list where i can just do my reviews on there so people can check those out too once i figure that out i'll try to uh, retroactively put all those reviews back on there but anyway so here are the things that stood out to me so they had the sound effects on point the sounds of like bones cracking and skin slicing i know that says ski slicing but you know like i said i'm just typing and doing a bad job at it um all that stuff the sound effects were on point and it just tonight it's gonna live in my head rent free after that i'm not gonna think about it. i'm gonna completely forget but it was nasty and then here we go we got next question and i'm gonna have the written review uh on the website cypresspit.com sometime eventually I'm gonna try to get to it tonight i got a little bit of energy and i got uh some coffee so we'll see if i can be up to like four in the morning all right how well did the movie handle character development were the characters compelling were they well-rounded were they one-dimensional were they stereotypical well here are my thoughts i think they were all no names and outside of tobin bell Nobody really stood out or got any character development. Yeah, they showed Amanda, and it kind of, like, hinted that she might be a little bit um, not wanting to do what Saul wants to do, or Jigsaw, because they were, like, debating on whether or not they should just wreck somebody. Actually, they weren't really debating. Amanda was like, oh, this person don't deserve no chance. Just kill her. Why are you letting her even get a chance to escape? And then John Kramer has to say, oh, but I gave you a chance to escape. And that's a little bit of spoiler, but it's not really because, again, this movie's a prequel, so all that stuff you guys already know. Amanda was part of the reason why John started acting the way he was acting. Um, 
This is what are some of the movie's strengths and weaknesses? I thought the movie was fine, as it is. So I mean, I can put that here if you want. The movie, the movie was fine. Strength and weaknesses, it, it was fine. It's nothing that I could really say that I would add or take away. Um, this one's really funny. All right, so here, let me let me put the whole question in so you guys can read it. Right, so how did the movie compare to others in its genre or to other movies you've seen recently? All right, so here's my thoughts. I think the movie holds up pretty well. Um, I personally like Evil Dead Rise better because that was less gory and more horror, more scary. So I like that better than just the the gore element of it. I like a little bit of gore, but I don't know. This one was too realistic, so it was just... it. I don't know, man. It made me a little uncomfortable. I'm sorry. I'm a little punk. Um, screen 6, though, was on a sense of being. Because that movie was just extra. It wasn't just a horror movie. It was like horror comedy satire. So, And the the Scream Killer, I forget what it was, the Ghostface Killer was just doing all the most. He's like, I'm not like anybody you've ever killed before. It, I, I just like that. that. That movie was really good. And then I'm going to say this was way better. Like far and away better than this year's uh, The Pope's Exorcist with... Um, what's his name? Russell Crowe. The area. You must come into the area. That's that's Russell Crowe's accent from Thor: Love and Thunder that he then used in The Pope's Exorcist. So, I'm gonna say that movie was just <laughs> that sound. It was <laughs> sorry, Pope's Exorcist. Sorry, Russell Crowe. You know I like you, but that movie was uh kind of boring. It was, was kind of boring. It doesn't help that I fell asleep on it, so that that might be why. It's only towards the end. I was very tired. All right. What impact do I think the movie's going to have on its intended audience? So, funny thing about the audience. At my screening, they skewed kind of young. I had some older people there. I had some people that were mostly younger. At least they looked like it. I don't really think I've seen a lot of people my age there. So, I think they're going to think it was just okay. Because the one guy with his date was like, eh, Do I really want to stay to see this bonus scene at the end? and they did but it was like nobody else really did all right so i think this is a good film if you're streaming for real for real this is gonna go great on streaming if you're a big fan obviously add it to your collection but if you're not a big fan mm, you're gonna be like eh, eh, catch it on streaming all right final score what do i give it it's mid there we go seven out of ten even though I know people will be like, oh, but what isn't Midway 5 out of 10? No, American grading system. If you scored 50% on the quiz, you failed. You only got half the knowledge. You got to score 70 or higher. It really 65 to get a D. But um, no, this was a 7. 7 out of 10. So 6 out of 10 is okay. And then 6.5 would be like, oh, it's a little, it's a little bit better than okay. Um, wait, hold on. Am I doing that right? Let me read this damn scale again. IG and review scale help me out oh yeah, yeah and then seven is good i think this movie was good as much as disgusting as i found it seven out of ten it was good it wasn't better than good it wasn't slightly better than good and it wasn't slightly worse than good this was a solid seven out of ten it was good so don't first of all people here's where the scale the scales go it really starts six and up everything under six is like hmm we're getting some bad things here i think 65 i might have gave a five it was mediocre but that's anything five and under is bad. Six and up is still worth seeing. So don't think just because a movie gets a six from me is not worth seeing. Because that just means it's okay. If it's five, shoot, that might even be okay to see too. But a mediocre is not doing nothing new. It's just bland. So let me see what's a four. Four is bad. Yeah, anything four and under you don't want to see. Five and up you should still give a chance to see. Because that might be your cup of tea. It's just not my cup of tea. Like I saw a trailer for Napoleon that has, um, what's the guy that plays Joker? Y'all remember the guy that plays Joker? I don't remember his name. But it had, um, oh, Joaquin Phoenix. Wa Joaquin Phoenix. It has Joaquin Phoenix in it. And I'm like, not going to see that. That looks boring. But it's probably going to be a good film. But it, to me, it just looks boring. You know, I did like that Brad. No, I like that um, the movie with Matt Damon and what's his friend name? Who cares? It was the movie that just came out last year with Adam Driver, Matt Damon, and um, Ben Affleck. And it was the movie. It was like the first conflict. It's, it, who cares? I watch a lot of movies. That movie was good. I like that movie. It was a boring movie, but I enjoyed it. All right. So now let me give you final thoughts. Uh, I already went over these notes, but really, here we go. Well, I ran over some of these notes, but let me go through them really quick. Actually, let me copy and paste it in there. That way it's looking like I'm typing something. Doing a lot less typing on this one. This one's I've, I've come prepared with 
uh, just reading so that way it's easier it's easier for me because if I'm sitting there typing it on your ears I'm gonna hit the wrong buttons it's gonna be clickety clackety all right so here we go so this film at first the first trap it was getting on my nerves because I didn't know it was gonna be that loud because I didn't go to an IMAX showing so I was just annoyed and I was like oh this whole turning the volume up loud and twisting the camera around because the camera was so hype spinning around he's all like ah ah eh, get me out of here and then the camera's all twisting around on the 360 I was like mm, I don't like this this is old Y'all yeah, been doing this since the early 2000s. This camera is like the film's hype man. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't like it at first. Then it was like, okay, it's okay. They calmed down a bit. Um, John Kramer is a funny little scene. John Kramer described himself as like a life coach. And that was funny. Because he's like, oh, what do you do for a living? He's like, oh, I help people. And he's like, oh, you're like a life, boat, a life coach. He's like, yeah, something like that. So I thought that was funny. Spoiler, but not really. Um, the music and sound effects were good. Like I said, we already talked about that. The traps were gross and gory and creative, though. But definitely gross and gory. This was hard to watch for sure. If you got a weak stomach, this is definitely hard to watch. Um, I did like the use of quick flashbacks because I knew I was talking about the Expendables and I didn't like their flashbacks took forever to show up. But this one had a quick flashback of like, hey, this is why this character is important. You saw this character here because, again, they're all no names, so they're not recognizable. So I really enjoyed that. Maybe I have a short attention span and wasn't paying attention. But, you know, well, none nonetheless... I appreciated the use of those quick flashbacks because it was really hard to keep up with these no names. Sorry. Um, this movie really gave John Kramer a chance to shine. He had a lot of talking scenes. He wasn't just stuck in the wheelchair. Like, we get to see him moving around, so it was good. Um, this movie is. Oh, that's a cuss word. Any other cuss words right there? <laughs> Sorry for leaving that in there. Uh, this movie is nasty. I hate it. And I don't know who was squirming more the camera or me. Because, the like I told you, the camera was just all hype, moving around. And I'm, you know, it was so embarrassing. I was sitting right in front of, I don't know why these little young kids going to sit behind me. All just, I thought they was going to kick my chair. They was kicking it a little bit, but it wasn't like crazy where I need to turn around. Like, yo, you guys kicking my chair. But they was probably squirming too. But I'm sitting there like squirming, leg, leg, grabbing my leg. Ah, ugh, ugh, it was nasty. And <laughs> it, it was just crazy. And then it was a very nice third act twist. I'm not telling you nothing. You don't get no spoilers from me. But I really enjoy that these movies are known for their third act twist. And I know movies are spelled terribly wrong, but it is what it is. And like I said, a lot more younger kids came out to my show than I would have expected. All right, so those are my quick thoughts. See, it helps to have everything written down. Because where are we at? 30 minutes? Oh, I'm surprised I'm still at 30 minutes. I thought it was going to be done sooner. All right, well, those are my quick thoughts on... Saw X. Actually, those aren't quick at all. That's my review for Saw X. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Or what is the thing I said? Okay, love you. Bye. I forgot how these outros go, but just, you know, thank you for the support. If you're watching this, I really do appreciate it, and hopefully I can get, like, an edited version of a review on the channel sometime soon. Probably not, because this month is just a very busy month for me. I do apologize, but I hope you like these live streams. I've been having fun with them because I get to just talk and ramble, and I really like talking and rambling to you guys. And I don't have to worry about trying to make things perfect and like, oh, stick to the script, or oh, get this delivery right. In a world where Cr John Kramer is still somehow alive, he's back, baby. Can this movie top the, the saw that had Chris Rock, or is this movie dying in its own death trap? Let's find out. See, like, you got to get that perfect and that was just off the top of the head and that will not make it into the final cut because i don't even remember what i just said just freestyling i'm rambling again okay see you guys